Tune in to Spirit and Life. In just a few moments, our topic will be God wants peace and order in our lives. Life Christian Television invites you to join us now for Spirit and Life with Pastor Charlie Alvarado. Hello and welcome to Spirit and Life. I'm your host, Charlie Alvarado, and I have the honor today of bringing God's Word to you. Our topic today will be God wants peace and order in our lives. Got a lot of great things to share from His Word. God loves us. He only wants good for us every day. So we're going to talk about God, how He's meticulous, how He has everything to do with order and not chaos. But before we continue, I want to say thank you to our church family, One for Life Ministries, for underwriting this program. And I want to invite you to come and join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We're located at 131 McClintock on the west side, 79932 is our zip code. We'd love for you to come and be with us. We have ministry for children and youth. Uh, we have couples ministry, counseling, whatever it is that we can do to serve you. Members of the body of Christ, we want to be a blessing to you. Come and visit us. You can just be yourself and, and hear the word. Uh, be in the presence of people who will love you and accept you just as you are. So give us a chance to show you what God is doing in our midst. Well, praise the Lord. Let's get right into the word here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. God wants order. This is talking about order in the services. God doesn't want people, everybody talking at the same time when, when the gifts of, of prophecy are, are, being, are, are manifesting. He doesn't want just people speaking out of order. God wants us to respect one another. He wants us to respect the order of His service. That's how God is. You know, I think about the law of entropy. You know, most of us are familiar with the law of gravity. It's a natural law. What goes up must come down. The law of entropy is, is, is another natural law, and I'm sure we can all uh, relate to it. And, and the simplest way I can declare it is that things by nature will go from order to disorder, or things simply in the world have a natural tendency of falling apart. Order has to be maintained, whether it's your car, whether it's your house, whether it's your yard, even your own body. We've got to keep things in order because if we don't, then things will get out of control. And then and the more we allow time to go by and we don't put things in order, the more Effort's going to have to be applied to, to clean things up or to organize things. And, and so God wants us to be organized in how we think and how we live. One thing I try to encourage people to do whenever they're going through a difficult time, and you know, we can't control everything, but we can and should control ourselves. So we have to control how we're thinking and how we're living, the things that we do, and even our surroundings. What can we start organizing? What can we put in order? Because where there's order, there's peace. Where there's disorder, there's chaos, there's confusion. So our God is a God of order. And I like to think about, you know, in the beginning, and, and we, get, we get to see the personality of God. We get to see how meticulous He is. God wants things in order. He's perfect in all of His ways. And, you know, He's working on us, as the Scripture says, it is God who works in us both to will and to do His good pleasure. So God wants us to be like Him and to live perfect lives. I, again, that's easier said than done. But, you know, it's just day by day. And that helps me. And I hope it helps you to know that all we have to do is, is, is our best today and not be concerned about tomorrow. But, you know, we can work on today thinking right, speaking right, and doing the right things. And if we just concentrate in the day, God will give us grace. He will give us wisdom and, and whatever we need to, to succeed each and every day. So here uh, in Genesis chapter 1, you know, verse 1 says, God created the sky and the earth. At first, the earth was completely empty. There was nothing on the earth 
Darkness covered the ocean and God's spirit moved over the water. So it was just a blob. There was nothing really there. There was no specific order to it, but, but it was there. It existed, but there was no real form or shape to it. And so on the first day of creation, God said, let there be light. So he starts, he starts bringing order into the earth where it was covered with darkness. So now he says, let there be light. And there was light. The second day, he, he divided the earth and, from the sky. So he made the sky. And again, you can read uh, Genesis chapter 1. I'm not going to go through it verse by verse. But uh, I'm just in general going to cover the things that happened on each particular day. So the second day, he made the sky. The third day, he made the dry lands and the plants. So everything. He started separating the waters from the earth. And he started to create living things on the land. The fourth day, he, he made the sun and the moon and the stars. So something to light, uh, to give us light by day, and then the stars and the moon to give us light by night. The fifth day, he made the fish and the birds. On the sixth day, he made the, the animals, the land animals, and of course, he made people. And on the seventh day, he rested. But notice, there's order to how God does things. You know, he didn't put the animals and the people on the earth first because they would not not be able to survive. Uh, there would be nothing for them to eat. So he had to first, you know, let make sure that we have light and let's make sure there's a sky uh, and, and let's make sure that there's land for people to walk on, plants so people can live off of. Let's make sure that they can see during the day and they can see during the night. Let's make sure that there's also food uh, for them to eat, whether it be the fish and the birds. But anyway, he created living things before he created the people. All right. And of course, he rested on the seventh day. But I want to jump down to Genesis chapter two. Again, we're speaking about how God is the God of order. He does everything in perfect order. And let me remind you that at the end of every day, God said, it is good. He was happy with what he did each particular day. He was satisfied. This is something that you and I have to learn from him is that we have to be satisfied with what we do every day. It is the will of God. It is how God operates. He wants you to be glad and happy with the way you are living with the choices that you are making. So God has to be involved in our lives. We need the help of the Holy Spirit every day to live in peace and to live in order. And this is the will of God, not to be in chaos. Chaos is not how God wants things to be in your life, not to let there not be any, any chaos in your own heart or in your mind. Remember, Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and he said, peace, peace. Be still. He quieted things down. We have to do that to ourselves when there's a storm within and, and, and things seem chaotic on the inside. We have to take control of our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, what we think, what we feel and what we desire. And just say, peace, be still. Quiet yourself down. Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14, verse 1, don't let your hearts be troubled. So that's our responsibility is to put things in order. Well, let's see how God, he created the heavens and the earth. And in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 4 through 9, uh, it says, when the Lord made when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth, for the Lord God had not sent rain to had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord Plant, the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. So again, nothing, I mean, there, there, things weren't growing. Nobody was to take care of the land, so God made the man. Somebody had to take care of what he created, so he made the man and put him in the garden. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. 
In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God, again, our God is a God of order. So there's things, uh, even in all creation, everything had to be done in perfect order. In verse 15, Genesis 2, 15 through 17, the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. So God of God of order says, I'm going to make man in, in my image, in my likeness, and I'm going to put him here on the earth. I'm going to create this whole earth. I'm going to make everything beautiful, everything perfect, everything with a purpose. Everything has a function. And so even the man had purpose and function. He put him in the garden. God gave him the responsibility to tend to, his, to God's creation. And, and he even instructed him, eat from everything. The trees are going to produce fruit for you. The plants are going to produce fruits. You can eat right off the land here. You have everything you need. Just stay away from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God always wanted man to depend on him. He didn't want us to know good and evil. He wanted us to know God. He wanted us to have a relationship with God and to fully depend on God for everything, especially his word, his wisdom and direction. Adam and Eve, you know, did not do this. They disobeyed God and ate the fruit as they were instructed not to do. So again, the point I want to make today, God is perfect and he is the God of order. And when there is order, there is peace. When there's disorder, there is chaos. Matthew chapter 21. Uh, Jesus, this is uh, verses 12 through 14. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers or thieves. The blind and the lame came to him and the temple, at the temple and he healed him. God is a God of order. The temple was made for prayer. The temple was God's house and it was made for worship. These people were using the temple for their own personal gain, using things, using the house of God to buy and sell things and, and, and to do whatever kinds of deals they were doing. They weren't in there praying as they should. They weren't in there worshiping God as they should. So you were, they were using God's house for their own personal use. The Lord was upset and reminded them, my house will be called a house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers. So basically, Jesus cleaned house. He put things in order. And then after he cleaned house, in verse 14, it says, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. This is what the Lord does when he comes into our lives when we let him have his way, he comes into our life and begins to put things in order. If we follow him, if we love him, if we honor him, we're going to allow ourselves to go through change. Like Paul uh, reminds us, offer your bodies or begs us, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Right? He says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't take on the nature or characteristics of this world. Instead, be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Transformed into what Christ is, into Christ likeness, is what the Lord wants for you and for me to live in peace, to live in harmony, to, to not be anxious about anything, but to trust God for everything. It is the will of God for you and me today and every day. So just like Jesus came into the temple here in Matthew chapter 21, and it's in the other gospels as well. Uh, but this one here, it says how the blind and the lame came and they were healed. So it wasn't until Jesus put things in order in the temple, in God's house, that the miracles started happening. See, because uh, 
there were no there there was no room or they weren't allowing for the gifts of the spirit for the gifts of healing because they were doing their own thing and not God's thing so once Jesus came in cleaned house then we could see the manifestation of God's presence there in the house of God Jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God it's important that we put things in order in our own hearts in our minds and in the way that we are living blessed Jesus said are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness blessed are the peacemakers right blessed are the the uh, uh, are the meek you know all you know he's teaching us how to be blessed what do we have to do in order to see and experience God's goodness in our own lives all these things speak of order how we should be thinking how we should be living you know and 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 us you know being conformed to the image of Christ is the will of God transformed by the renewing of our minds changing the way we think if we change how we think then the way we live will also change and what God wants to see in you and me is Christ living in us what the world needs to see is Christ living in us so it's important that we allow God's perfect order to manifest in our lives this is something that you and I have to work on every day because order has to be maintained when I learned, I heard about the law of entropy it was from a man from the church I used to be at. He, you know, brilliant guy. And, and he said, you know, it, the law of entropy, entropy proves to me that God exists. Because again, entropy speaks of things going from order to disorder naturally. So he says, God keeps all the planets in perfect order. He keeps them in perfect order. If God wasn't keeping everything in perfect order, there would be complete chaos and so God is holding everything back for that day when he's going to destroy the earth and he's holding it back but that day is coming and so God is giving us a chance to, to get right with him and help others get right with him because that day is going to come he's not going to hold back any longer so now things are being held back so that people can come to Christ people can come to salvation and so it's important that we allow order and peace to abide in us and, and we've got to work towards that it has to be maintained Paul in his second letter to Timothy he said I fought the good fight I kept you know, he says I, I fought the good fight I finished the race I kept the faith I, I kept myself in the faith I maintained myself in faith you know so again maintenance is necessary for us as we live in this imperfect world in this chaotic world there's got to be peace there has to be order in our lives it is the will of God God does not want any of his children to be anxious or worried about a single thing he wants us to be in peace and he tells us in his word that he will keep us in perfect peace if our minds are stayed on him so it has everything to do with how we're thinking don't let your hearts be troubled be anxious for nothing pray again this is what the word tells us to do because he wants you and me to be in peace if we're in peace we're going to hear God more clearly if there's order if we're, if we're living right and we're doing the things that we know are pleasing to God then we're going to be more able to hear his voice and of course be led by his spirit which is God's will for you and me today and every day first Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 uh, here Paul's writing and he says I urge you first of all to pray for all people ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. So, you know, he's saying he's not saying judge everybody, curse everybody. You know, he says pray for all people. That's your neighbor. That's whoever you see in the store, whoever you're where when you go to the bank, wherever you interact with people, pray for them and ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them so if we're giving thanks for people then we can't be looking down on them we've got to we're instructed by the word to esteem others 
higher than we do ourselves. This is order. This is how God wants you and me to live. And it helps me, and I hope it helps you, to, to remember that we're not of this world. That, that, you know, I pray for this country because I live in this country, but I pray for other countries as well, that there be peace. We need to pray that there be peace in this country, the country that we're living in. He says, intercede on their behalf and give thanks. Verse two, pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives. So we need to pray for those who have authority. The decision makers from the president down down to the city mayor, from military leaders, everybody, for the police officers and, and, and everyone who has authority in this country that we live in, we need to pray for them so that God will help them. I'm just telling you what is written in the word. These are the instructions given to us. We're not from here. We're temporary residents. So he says, intercede on their behalf. We're from heaven and we want to experience as much as we can heaven on earth. And so we've got to be in peace. We've got to be peacemakers. Those are the children of God, according to what Jesus said. And, and so, you know, peacemakers, peace lovers, that's what you and I should work towards. That's how we, we can keep ourselves in, in perfect peace. If we're peaceful, you know, it's up to us to to create the atmosphere in our home or wherever it is you go or wherever it is you, you, you visit, you know, you know, in our home or hopefully it's in, in every one of our homes that when people come in, they walk into a peaceful environment. And that can only happen if those who live there are peaceful. It's my desire that when people come to church that they, they come into a loving, peaceful, joyful atmosphere. Well, and they do. Why? Because the people are loving and joyful and peaceful. We're, we care for one another. We serve one another. So that is the atmosphere that we generate, that we create, and others can come in and just rest in it and, and partake of it. And that's on you and that's on me to create a, a very positive, peaceful atmosphere wherever we are. So it's up to us to make sure that we stay in peace. If we have to forgive somebody, he's telling you here, telling us here, pray for everybody. And, and especially for those who are in authority, those who make decisions. He doesn't say judge them. He doesn't say condemn them. He says pray for them intercede for them, ask God to help them so that they can make decisions because it's what they say and do, you know, determines how we're going to live in this nation, whether it's going to be peaceful or chaotic. And my family, we got a lot of praying to do. So it's our responsibility as believers so that we can help or to pray for those who make decisions, those who have the power uh, that affect our lives uh, to make the right choices and that, that, that God would help them. It says so that we can live peaceful, quiet lives, right? Marked by godliness and dignity. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Here the Lord is, is, is uh, pretty much laying out uh, the perfect order of the family. Remember, God wants peace and order in our lives. And we have to respect order uh, and the order of God. You know, uh, we, we should never come between one another's families or anything like that because that existed prior to our coming together. You know, I, I respect my wife and her family. She respects me and my family. And, and we don't come between each other's families because that order existed prior to the coming of, of the two lives. And the same thing when people come to church and we, we respect one another, but they come from families and backgrounds and we don't want to come between them and their family members. In fact, we want to try to help there be peace in that. So I'm speaking of order here. And so here in verse, 1 Corinthians eleven three, 3, Paul writes, There is one thing I want you to know. The head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman or the woman is man and the head of Christ is God. 
every man is, this is a parenthesis here, this is a footnote, every man is responsible to Christ, a woman is responsible to her husband, and Christ is responsible to God. So ladies, you're not responsible to all men, you're responsible to your husband, because according to the scriptures, the husband is the head of the wife, and just as Christ is head of the church. And so the, the husband should love his wife the same way that Christ loves the church. This is order. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Wives, honor your husband the way the church honors Christ. And so there's love and respect. It has to be if we're going to live in order and in peace. We, we must give each other our, our place. We're all under God. We're all under Christ. But even Christ was responsible to God. And he lived it here on the earth, trusting God for everything he did and for everything he said. So there's order. Of course, the children come under the mother, and so they need to respect their mother with the father's covering as well. And so Christ is the head of man. Uh, man is the head of his wife, and, the, and God is the head of Christ. So everyone has to respect order. There's nobody that God can submit to. He's above all things. There is no one above him, no one who can counsel him, no one uh, that... that um, that can instruct him, okay? So, and there's nothing too difficult for our God. So he is the most high. He's above all things. But the rest of us have to submit to those who are above us to have respect and order. And then uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to uh, see where I can go from here. I'm going to jump down to uh, Col Colossians chapter 3, verse um, 12, he says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. God wants peace. God wants unity. Harmony And let that peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. You and I are called to live in peace. So if we're not peaceful, then we're not where we're supposed to be. God wants you to be at peace. Love, forgive, put on kindness, put on gentleness, put on mercy. Let's make sure that we're letting Jesus live in us. We have to honor one another, respect one another, and, and have peace and order in our lives today and every day. It is the will of God. If things are chaotic in your life right now, just, just forgive whoever you need to forgive, even if you have to forgive yourself. Ask God to forgive you. Humble yourself. He will lift you up. And you can't control everything, but there are certain things that, that you can do. And my advice is to simply start putting things in order. And starting with yourself, starting with how you're thinking. Make sure that you're walking in love and forgiving. And if you have to organize things at home, start there. <music>